tormented and you start to say really absurd things like oh we've been cursed oh this person is a witch oh this person is a warlock oh all of these falsehoods which is a form of blasphemy because soon as the power of the Holy Ghost come to you and then you try to relabel it as a demon or a devil or such and such when you are watching the the manifestation of everything that happens when you reject the Holy Spirit when you reject a sent one you start seeing the ramifications of your lampstand being blown out and so that person has now moved on like Samuel moved on and now he's he's focused on David he's making sure David's good because David is king he's in the future he's not back in the past. Saul is in position, but he's the past. He, it doesn't even exist. Saul said, this very moment, you're fired. Now, he was still there, but God wasn't. You understand? The presence of the Lord wasn't even with him. He wasn't hearing from him no more. He was terrified. He didn't know what to do. Tormenting spirits are talking to him. Fear is consuming him. You know, he's sending people out in the background to set David up. And David's not even thinking about him. Samuel's not even thinking about him. This is what some of you pastors are doing, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And again, I'm, talk I'm just going to talk to you heart to heart, and I'm going to put the scripture citations that these things are are going to reference into so I'm going to point you to God in the description I'm going to point you to where God says it I have the word of the living God in my heart like the Bible tells us to etch his word in his heart so that when the time comes when you don't have that book in front of you when when Bibles aren't in your hand and readily available it's in your heart that's what God means. So that when when you when someone tries to come and confront you with a con, a, a converse word, you have it in your heart. So we you can speak boldly against that because it's in your heart. You understand? And having said that, I want you to think about how the Pharisees dealt with Jesus, right? So Jesus was sent, and he always he always said, I'm, 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 "I was sent of my Father." So he's a sent one, right? So Jesus is going about and he's healing the sick and, and, and setting free the captives and, and, and telling the people, you know, the blind people to see and the mute to speak and, you know, performing all of these miracles and everything like that. Jesus is not thinking about the, um, the Pharisees and, and all of that stuff like that. The Pharisees didn't even really put too much attention on Jesus because Jesus came um, and he didn't make himself of any reputation. And that doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't beautiful. You people out there that are saying, oh, Jesus looked all raggedy and homely and all that. No, of no reputation. Jesus didn't come wearing fame on his back, wearing the, the biggest bling, like, hey, look at me. Jesus came humble. He came humble. That does not mean that he didn't wash his face. He didn't groom himself. He didn't look beautiful as he was. Because another word that I was, um, that I was given is people need to stop telling people that uh, uh, associating of uh, being of no reputation as being uh, looking like a bum or looking like he's homeless. So look, Jesus was absolutely stunning. Jesus is absolutely beautiful. If you look uh, who his, he descends from. The Bible went out of its way to talk about how beautiful David was. The Bible went, went out of its way to talk about how beautiful Solomon was. The Bible went out of its way to talk about how beautiful Mary was. Do you understand what the, you know, I can keep going down the lineage of Jesus. Rebecca, and you have, down the lineage of Jesus, of how beautiful these people were. Now, how do you have this type of beauty in your lineage, and then all of a sudden it gets to Jesus, and it's, just, it's not the case? See, so you, you sit and you listen to somebody tell you something out of their own heart, out of their own agenda, and you don't understand that God uses beauty. And if God fashions you as a beautiful person, and, and all of us are, but if some some of us are, are put in a certain position of beauty because you have a, 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 a calling on your life and that beauty is considered a gift, a gift. Abigail, for example, you know, Abigail was so beautiful that 
David was going to kill her husband for, you know, treating him ill. David had been kind to, to Abigail's husband and his troops and everything like that. And when David needed help, you know, Abigail's husband's like, well, who him? I don't know him like that. So David hears that. He's like, oh, yeah? Okay, you're going to repay my good for evil? Oh, no. We, so David's plots in his heart, in his emotions. How many times do we do that? Get in our emotions and instead of in our right mind and taking it to God. David gets in his, in his heart and, and, you know, I'm going to kill him. You know, and it took Abigail, his wife, the, the you know, this, this man's wife, to come and intercede. And she was beautiful and she was striking. And her beauty was something that David was drawn to. And she was listening to her. It wasn't just, okay, she brought him food and she interceded in it. But she talked to him. But it was her beauty that softened his heart too. All of these things were used by the father to get David to, to, to come back into alignment with the Lord. And because the, the Lord says that we're supposed to bless and not curse which is so we're supposed to sit at his right hand while he while he makes our enemies our footstool and because and David listened to Abigail and in listening to Abigail Abigail's husband was dead in 10 days and David was able to take Abigail as his wife you have to know your Bible. You have to know your word. And you just can't let somebody tell you something without you slowing down and saying, wait a minute. So Jesus was just an eh, all right looking person. And that, no, he wasn't. He was absolutely beautiful, but he was humble. He was humble. He didn't come as a rock star. He didn't come. He came as, he was a carpenter's son. And, 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 and his stepfather raised him to build. He builds the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus said. He said, I go and I, I, I build Monet's, which are, you know, mansions and some people say I the father revealed to me that you know the the word mansion didn't exist and it, a, a Monet is a realm but I'll deal with um uh the challenges on that but Monet's are realms says there are several realms there's realms kingdoms regions territories in my father's house that's what that means